Birds are just the best, right? Like they're beautiful, they sing, they can fly, they're charismatic. They have that power to really captivate someone. You know, like seeing an American Kestrel for the first time or seeing a Rufus Hummingbird for the first time. And it's sort of this transformative experience where it's like, wow, I didn't know that that was out there. And like, what else is out there that I've not seen before? So birds, because they're so conspicuous and visible, they have that ability to really make those connections. Birds are sort of an easy and accessible. Pileated woodpecker calling? That was pileated calling in the distance? Birds have that ability to like to really capture that more than, than other, uh, other taxons. You can always tell when the birders are around. There's always people with binoculars and whatnot walking around and you can tell the birders are here. So throughout the week, we have over a hundred events, which is pretty phenomenal. And it's everything from exploring geology of the area to the waters, birds, of course, just our natural habitats that we have around. And it's, it really spans the whole gambit of everything nature. I love being in a place where you know this area is protected and the ecosystem is intact. And you know, this whole valley is just, that's, that is pretty special. The bird life and animal life here is just, it's, it's so dense. Like there's so many things here because we have an intact ecosystem. And I wish we had more examples of this valley in other places for sure. This is, this is a gem. There are three types, and I generalize when I say this, three types of rivers in the world. There are braided rivers, steep rivers. You drop the slope a little bit and you get meandering rivers. They're sinuous and they go back and forth across the river. And then you, you reduce that slope even more and almost flat, but not quite, you've got the Columbia River. And that's the Anastomos River. So if you want to remember something when you leave, braided, meandering and anastomosed. The hummingbird. That tiny Yep, I hear the did you hear the this is this is But when they're oh oh you just what you just flew by. So there's more in the area. Feels nice to share it with people who like just want to get into it too. Just um, sharing the knowledge with other people just make them feel happy and you feel happy. And then they know more about birds and then you continue to keep learning. And just being like, oh, there's like a bright blue one up there. See that tree that is basically just over the, far away, just over the, the river? And you see a, a sort of like a, a hollow and then a black? That's a nest, that's an eagle's nest. Yeah. So we're going to have a peek to see if anybody's home. But it looks like this year, they're not using that nest. I don't see him right now. Okay. So wait, that bus right over there? Yeah, he's coming towards us now. So we're here birding in the, in the Columbia Valley, which is part of the BC Bird Trail. We've got this incredible length of wetlands in the Columbia Valley. This is 25th anniversary of the Wings Festival and I've been around for most of that and uh, I've done this walk probably every year for the last 10 years. It's just so good. I've been birding since I was, I was a kid, I think seriously since I was a teenager, and, and I've been working with birds uh, as, a, as a researcher and as a biologist for most of my adult life. And, uh, but now the thing I enjoy most is, is uh, sharing birds with other people, you know, and festivals like this is just such a great opportunity to do that. And it's a great opportunity for people maybe just wanting to learn about birds or start their birding journey coming to a festival like this is absolutely should be on the list. Uh, really is a great way to start. 
Oh, yeah, that could be him. Actually. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. wow. Hey, look at that. Rufus. It is the hummingbird. Okay, here. Rufus hummingbird in the scope. Come get it. Oh. Okay. Hold on to your butts. Oh, yeah, he's looking Kay. good. He's looking so, good, but it'll look better from a different angle. But yeah, he's in the scope. It just, just started arriving. Rufus hummingbird. It's a hummingbird and it's Rufus. They, it's pretty easy. Two birch trees. He's on the right hand. This bird up close is like, if it doesn't make you a birder, you probably don't have a soul. Like, hey, everyone else, come on in. Rufus hummingbird in the scope. Tree swallows have a very sweet sound. Like tweet, tweet, tweet. It's very sweet. All the other swallows sound like they're about to throw something up. Rough wing swallows, they, they're just like <laughs> going over. It's like they got the short end of the stick in terms of swallow vocalizations. Tree swallows are so nice, but rough wings sound rough. That's a good way to remember it. Like that bird said a rough night. Must be a rough wing swallow. What I like to do is I like to get out and I like to encourage people to get into landscape and then to and, and natural environments. And I like to help them understand why that natural environment is there. The Columbia River Valley flows along a trench, which we call the Rocky Mountain Trench. It extends for about 2,500 kilometers from northern Montana, northern Washington, north through British Columbia, up into the territories and then into Alaska. I describe wetlands like this as, as linear oases. You, you look around here, we've got the pines. It's a very dry climate in the summer. There's not a lot of moisture here. So wetlands are really, really, really important for creating bird habitat. So I see the Wings Over the Rockies Nature Festival as a great opportunity to bring people together to understand wildlife, to understand bird distribution, to appreciate all of the birds that we've got in this valley. If people can appreciate, then they become aware. They are aware of the landscape. And then we've got people that will protect that environment, will protect that landscape. It's, you know, and it's been said so many times, but it's, it's really hard to conserve something unless you understand it and appreciate it. So birding and learning your birds and coming on a walk with us, I would hope that that would spurn people to appreciate birds more, understand them a little bit more, and I hope that those people will start making conservation-based you know, decisions with everything they do going forward. That's sort of, that's sort of the, the big dream, I suppose, right? But I think birds, unlike so many other things, have that ability to inspire change in people.